Hi students, welcome to Science Extension and Module 3, the Data, Evidence and Decisions. We're into our second inquiry question now and we're going to be looking a little bit more detail in this video at using descriptive statistics. This is the second section of Module 3, the section entitled Statistics in Scientific Research. The inquiry question that is overarching over this section of work is how does statistical analysis assist in finding meaning in the trends or patterns in data? Data sets. It's often useful to go through this thinking routine of generate, sort, connect, elaborate to get a bit of an idea of what you already know, what your expertise is, particularly in relation to statistical calculations, mean, median, mode, standard deviations, and we'll also look at some more significant statistical tests coming up in this section of work as well. So what we want to try and do is help identify what we already know and then add uh, some extra detail and depth to that knowledge. But specifically for this video, what we want you to do is to apply appropriate descriptive statistics to a data set, including but not limited to mean, median, and standard deviation. So firstly, let's recall what we remember from descriptive statistics. So descriptive statistics are summaries or descriptions of the characteristics of a data set. And we looked at three areas that we want to use for our descriptive statistics. They are the measures of central tendency, that is mean, mode, and median. And what we want to do now is we want to start to draw a distinction between the mean or the average for a population, that is the wider population that often we can't test, and then a sample mean, which is the bit that we have taken. And we want to try and see how close we can get between each of these two. And obviously a good sample is going to be representative of the population. Likewise, when we look at variability, we look at variance or standard deviation. And again, we can identify things like the population standard deviation as distinct from the standard deviation of a particular sample. And this is also the case for variance. And the third thing was frequency distribution. And I'm not going to worry too much about that in this particular video. So what we want you to do is we want you to start to get a bit of an idea of how to apply descriptive statistics to a set of data. So here's one example that we looked at. Take some bags of M&Ms and start to count out the different colors. And you get this range of different values for different bags. So only a small group, we only counted four bags in total. So that's a very small sample So remember that first of all. But then what we've got is firstly our measure of central tendency. So that is our mean, we can add all of the scores together and then divide by the total number of scores. Now I have four bags, so that means we're going to divide each of these totals by four. You can see I've already summed the totals for you. And that will give us the average number of each color in the bags. We could also put these in an order to work out the middle score. Now, obviously, putting all of these together is meaningless. We're better off comparing things like blues and yellows rather than totals in this case. Although you may be interested in the total number of M&Ms in each bag. So you can see if we had four bags in total. Three of them had 192 M&Ms. One had 195, so maybe a little bit of an outlier there. And of course, sometimes, particularly with this sort of data where we don't have, where we've got categorical data, we can use a mode to see if there's a most common score. And you'll notice again, looking through this table, that most of these scores are quite unique. We've got a couple of bags where the number of orange M&Ms was the same, so 237s there, which is a bit of a mode. But most of the others, you can see when you quickly glance through those uh, that table that there's really no mode for us to speak of. The other thing that we want to look at are the measures of variability. And in this case, these are samples. This isn't representative of the entire population of M&Ms. But what we do have are some samples, and we want to hope that our samples are reasonably representative. And of course, this is where when you're selecting your methodology, the number of samples, the amount of data that you collect is going to be very important. It is going to impact on how confident you can be in your conclusions at the end of all of this. So again, you can see the equations. What we're trying to do here is we're looking for the difference between each individual score and the mean. And we want to add all of those together. We're going to square them basically so they're all positive numbers. And then we're going to divide them by the total number. Now, that's what we do for standard deviation. We change that slightly in something that we're going to be calling the degrees of freedom 
which is something that we'll talk about a little bit later on. So that's n minus 1 rather than n. And the difference between variance and standard deviation is just the variance is the square of the standard deviation or the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So these two numbers are related to each other, and obviously you can do the same thing with a population with all of the M&Ms in the world, but that would be a tricky thing to try and count. So this then begs the question, do we do all of these calculations by hand, or is there a quicker way? Okay, so probably the best thing for us to do now is to just give you a little example of how you might be able to shorten this whole process when you're looking at descriptive statistics. So in order for us to do this, we first of all, we need our data, and this data is actually presented in Excel. I find Excel is the easiest way to work with a lot of this data. Now, the other thing that you wanna do is you wanna go onto the Data tab, and you want this section called Data Analysis. Now, that is an add-in, so you have to put that, that may not already be in your Excel program, so you probably have to add that in. So I'm going to hit Data Analysis. Now, you'll notice here, the nice thing about this is there's lots and lots of great tools here, some of which we are going to look at. And if you've read on a little bit, you already know that we do look at things like correlation. We are looking at things like F-testing and T-testing. And most of these are already covered here in our little analysis tool. So this is a great add-on and definitely one that's worth doing if you're going to be doing a little statistical analysis. But I want descriptive statistics. So I'm going to select that one. So I can go wherever I like, but I want to select descriptive statistics. And so here is where it gives me the selection of data. Now, what I want for my descriptive statistics is I want numbers. It's going to calculate means and things like that. So it needs numbers. So you can see I can select columns or rows. There's a little default that's come up here. And so I want to just make sure that I've got the data that I'm after. And you can see that the, the little data that I'm after is the four bags and the numbers of different colors in each bag. So that is what I'm after. You can put labels, labels in the first column. In this case, my labels are actually in the first row. So I am gonna to have to come back and tidy that up a little bit later. My output range, where do I wanna put that? Well, maybe I might just put that here in H2. So that'll give me a little table right next to it. And I am after summary statistics. Now you're gonna get lots and lots of summary statistics here, but at least that way we can go through, we can remove any of the things that we don't want. And it's as simple as that. Obviously, if your data is organized where you're looking at, say, comparing bag numbers, then you would group them by the columns. So at least this gives you an opportunity to group them by column or by uh, row. So let's have a look and see what we get. You can see there's a whole lot of information in here. So what I want to try and do is just make sure that it all is readable, first of all. And so, so here is all of my stuff. So what I need to do is to tidy this up a little bit. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at row one. These two bits of data both belong to row one. So I'm just going to merge those cells and call them red. The next set are row two. So I'm going to merge them and call them green and so on. Okay, now once I have all of these, what I probably want to do next is have a look down this list and see what makes sense to me. So you can notice we talked about the measures of central tendency. I've got my mean, I've got my median for each of these, and you can see my mode is pretty much meaningless. Uh, I've got a mode here for the blue color, and I've got a mode here for the orange color, but the others I don't have modes. You can also see I have standard deviations that have been counted calculated here for me, and also the sample variance. Now I have also things like kurtosis and skewness, and I'm not gonna talk about them at the moment. In fact, we're going to delete that data. So um, that's not data that we need, so we can get rid of that. The other thing that I probably would do is I would uh, see if I can reduce some of the decimal places a little bit because that's actually messing up some of my table at the moment. It's just a little bit big. So what I'll do is uh, just see if I can bring everything back to one decimal place at the moment. It's in a little bit more. So now you can see my columns. I should be able to see them all now. I'm going to bring these ones up because I've removed those other two rows. So there we go. So now we've got a little bit of stuff that's a little bit probably easier to manage in terms of some of these key values. So you can see my range, my maxima and minima for each of these. So that's giving me a measure of the spread of the data. 
It's also giving me the variance and the standard deviation for each of these values. So I can kind of put a little, little wider box around each one if I want, just to get a bit of a sense of where the data starts and finishes. So you can see now here's my red data all sitting in this little box here. I can do the same thing with my green data and so on. So the descriptive statistics are a really useful thing in Excel to give you a good overview of some of these important descriptive measures. You'll probably, if you use this application, have more than you'll ever need, which is fine. But what it does mean is that at a very simple glance, you can tell what all of these values that you're after are doing. So I could remove some of these modes, for example, that are giving me information that's not useful. Uh, I can talk specifically about the standard deviation and the variance, and you can see that for some, the orange is huge in terms of the variance, whereas the, the brown one's the smallest one of the lot. So this is giving us a little bit of an idea about the, the varying differences. Now, what I could also do with this data is I could see if there, I could start asking questions of the data. So I could say, is there an actual difference in the mean for the different colors in a packet of M&Ms. And look, you can get a feel for this with statistics, with descriptive statistics, just by looking at the mean and whether or not they all look fairly similar. Looking at the standard deviation, of course, if the standard deviation is very wide, that means you're drawing from a very wide range of values. And so therefore, there is more likely to be overlap if the standard deviation is very small, then that means a lot of the values are very close together. We may have less uh, of an overlap there. And you can see the total counts that I've got, uh, the number of bags that I've counted, the maximum and minimum number in each of these different bags. And so again, I can see something like I've got a huge range of different values for the blue, 23 from 47, the largest number in one of the bags, to 24. Whereas something like my reds, for example, I only have a range of nine, and that's because there's 39 in some of them, and the smallest one, 48, in the largest number. So obviously red seems to be one where there is lots and lots of these. It also has the highest mean. This is the usefulness of descriptive statistics, and it's also one of the reasons why I use Excel, because it has so many great tools that just at a single glance give you all of this information. You could then go through, highlight some of these things. If I felt that the red was one of the ones that I wanted to specifically look at, particularly in relation to all of the others, then what I might do is just change the font color. And now I can see very, very easily the difference between those values for the red M&Ms and something like my blue ones, for example. So I could do the same thing, go down my blue column, change my font color to a nice blue. And now you can see that I have uh, a very clear difference between the mean of the reds and the blues. This is the way that we can use descriptive statistics. And as I say, the main purpose when we're looking at statistics is not that you can mathematically calculate everything, but it's when you get a set of data like this that you can actually start to draw some conclusions. What we are going to need to do once we've had a bit of a talk about how we gather our data and what sort of things to look out for, we're then going to see if we can start to make inferences from our data to actually interrogate the data and see if there are things that we can do with it. But that is for another time. Thanks for watching.